Welcome to Search the Scriptures. Today we are on study number 7 in John's Gospel. And this study brings us to chapter number 4, verses 1 through 26. And it's the story of the woman at the well there in Samaria. Jesus finds himself in Samaria because he began to get quite a reputation. And he began to be dis baptizing more people than John the Baptist was, but actually it wasn't Jesus that was doing it, it was his disciples. But nonetheless, he had gained the attention of the religious community in Judea, and that was of some concern to him. You remember in the story of turning the water into wine, he had said, my time has not yet come. He knew that if he gained too much attention in the area around Jerusalem, that would get him into a lot of trouble a little bit earlier than he planned on. And he had some things to do. So he went back into Galilee so that he could gain his following and teach his word and train up his disciples in the relative safety of the region of Galilee. But on the way back, he had to go through Samaria. And when he's going through Samaria, he finds this woman at the well. And it says that Jesus goes to the well and while she is, while she is going to draw the water there at the well, he comes to her and asked, asked her to get him something to drink. It's interesting that this is, you know, at about noon when Jesus goes and sits down at this well. Now, I've had the privilege of living in countries where people had to go to wells as a missionary in West Africa. And people did not go to the well at noon. They went early in the morning. They went later on in the afternoon. But at the height of the day, when the sun was at its highest peak, would not be the typical time that a person went to the well. Unless, of course, you were the type of person that didn't want to be around other people. And it seems to be that maybe that was the case with this woman, as we will learn some things about her life as this story unfolds. Jesus finds her there at the well, and it says in verse number 8, he said to her there at noon at that well, will you give me a drink? Now listen to the response of this woman from Samaria. She said to him in verse 9, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? The Jews and Samaritans didn't get along very well. They didn't see eye to eye when it came to worship and religion. And the Jews had somewhat of an attitude of superiority when it came to the Samaritan people. And she couldn't really figure out why Jesus would ask her for water from the well. She was being a little bit sarcastic in her treatment of Jesus. But listen to what Jesus says to her in verse number 10 of chapter 4. If you knew the gift of God, and if you knew who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. That's a powerful statement that Jesus makes. You know, a lot of people in the world, when a Christian tries to approach them, and a Christian tries to offer them something, they, they kind of repel or recoil at that like the Samaritan woman did. And they may kind of say, well, I thought you were better than I am. And Jesus said, if you only knew what I'm trying to do, if you only knew the help that I'm trying to offer you. I find that the case a lot of times in trying to help people in this world, help people that are not Christians. They balk at receiving what you have for them because they, they have an attitude sometimes towards you as a Christian. Jesus, later on in this passage of Scripture, he says to her, you know, you Samaritans, it's here in verse 22, Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Jesus, is, in one sense, didn't deny having something that she did not have. In a sense, he was saying, in one sense, we are better, Jews are better, but not in the sense that they deserved it, just that they have something that you need to have. 
And that's how the church is in regards to this world. The church has something that the world desperately needs. If the church is better than the world, it's better because of Christ, not because of anything that the church has done, but what God has done for the Christian. So as a Christian, I need to approach people that are in this world and that are in need. And sometimes when I do, they're going to balk at that and recoil at that and be a little bit sarcastic towards me. I still need to realize who I am in Christ Jesus and the gift that God has given me and realize that that person that is trying to reject me and my word doesn't really understand the gift that is being offered them. And she says to Jesus, you know, you don't even have anything to draw water with. How are you going to get this water? And Jesus says in verse 13, everyone who drinks this water is going to be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Of course, her response to that is, give me some of that. I want that. I don't want to ever have to come back to this well again. I want the convenience of having what I want when I want it. That's not a good reason to come to Christ, to get what you want when you want it, to make him convenient, to have someone there always to, to talk to so you can give your list of demands so that he will fulfill them. So Jesus addresses the real issue. And in our evangelism, in our reaching out to the lost of this world, we have to address the real issue. Jesus addressed the real issue, the issue of why the woman was waiting till noon to come to the well, while why she was coming when all the other women weren't coming. It's because of the things going on in her life. And he said, well, if you want this, why don't you go and get your husband? And she says to him, well, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says to her in verse 17, You are right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is, and it's always important to deal with the facts in trying to bring someone into the community of the kingdom of God. The fact is, you've had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. So Jesus confronts her with her, her sin. He confronts her with the realities of her life. He confronts her with her desperate need, and he confronts her with her emptiness. And that speaks into her life. And she says, you know everything about me. You must be a prophet of God. And he tells her in verse 21, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. See, she, she had tried to, to play the card again between Jew and Samaritan. She was tr still trying to have pushback here against what he was trying to tell her. That, well, that may be fine for you Jews, but we are Samaritans. And he, and he comes right out and says, Jew or Samaritan has nothing to do with it. What God is desiring, he says, a time is coming in verse 3, and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God isn't in interested in the name over your church door. He is not interested with how you do worship at your church. He is interested with what is in here and if you will make him the Lord of your life. Remember in the last study, it was about looking upon that serpent on that pole, recognizing our sin and our need for deliverance. It's the same thing that Jesus did with this young woman at the well. He addressed her situation. He addressed sin in her life. He addressed her need. If we're going to win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to address their need. They'll be rude at times. They'll want to make distinctions, well, between the church and, and the world and how the church is hypocritical or this or that or the other. Jesus did not 
fall into that trap. He did not argue about that. He got right to the heart of the message and he says, look, get your husband. He addressed the sin in her life. And he said, look, what I'm looking for is sincerity of heart. I'm sure this woman walked away completely changed because she recognized, finally, the gift that was given her. She says at the end of this passage, well, when the Messiah comes, he will tell us all these things and he'll, he'll make it clear to us. And Jesus says to her, I who speak to you am he. I don't think Christ could identify, walk right up to you and identify clearly who he is without that making a profound change in your life. Friends, we need to come to people that are in desperate need. We need to point out their desperate need to them for a Savior. We need to just let them know God is their answer, and he wants to walk right into their life. No matter how they treat you while you are doing that, don't grow weary in well-doing, but keep up. Keep up evangelizing this world for Jesus Christ. You never know when you might walk across that lady at that well that desperate hour, all alone, and you can bring Jesus right into her life. I want you to think about people that you may encounter today, tomorrow, this week, and consider them as Jesus considered that woman. And as you do, I just believe the Holy Spirit is going to help you to minister love and grace and peace into their life, no matter how hateful their words might be initially. I just believe that at the end they will recognize Christ as the Messiah. I hope this study has been a blessing to you today. I hope you're having a great day so far. And may God richly bless the rest of your day.